Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to come to you today. And this is a much anticipated moment for me because we have been working on this for more than a year. It's the updated website, now known as CapriniRiscore.org. Previously, this was known as VenusDisease.com, but it has been updated thanks to a, a very, very stellar effort by the uh, Scottsdale Design Group uh, with uh, William Chase and also uh, uh, Shelley Buzio and uh, 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 with my assistant uh, producer, Dr. Hassan Saudalden. Now, first of all, I would like to dedicate this whole effort to uh, two individuals that you will see here. Professor Juan Arcelis, who is a professor of surgery in Granada and who was my fellow for three years in the late 80s. And also Gail Size, who was a uh, incredibly skilled uh, academic ultrasonographer and uh, a researcher. And together this team worked with me. Uh, now I would say we've been working uh, over 25 years uh, putting together things. And, and a lot of what has happened today, uh, Juan has been responsible for the beginnings of the website and Gail responsible for all of the studies where we've been tracking scans and studies as we navigated our way through this. So uh, this is dedicated to these individuals and I hope you enjoy uh, seeing this new website. Once you go to www.capriniriscor.org, you will see a home screen that will list several possibilities. The first and most important and why most people go to the website is to take your risk assessment. So we will start there. By clicking on the button, it will bring up the risk assessment factors. And you will see here at the top, the score is tallied as you go through this. So let us just uh, pick out some things here. Let's go to elective hip or knee replacement. Now you'll notice there's a definitions tab. And if you hit the definitions, it will give you the definitions of the minor surgery, major surgery, major lower extremity arthroplasty. And since we, uh, we clicked on that, let's go to uh, 10 and above. And it'll take us to an article that shows us that patients that have a score of 10 and above benefit with the Caprini score uh, of... Uh, a, a benefit with routine anticoagulation with a standard anticoagulant rather than aspirin. Whereas if it's less than 10, aspirin works very well. We can also go to another uh, study, which is a study in uh, orthopedic patients that uh, indicates the various risk factors such as uh, older age, immobility, and surgical time are very important risk factors for DVT. X out of the box and we can come back. Then as you come down, let's take a look at varicose veins under definitions. For example, varicose veins in patients who have cancer, uh, varicose veins increases the risk for recurrent occurrence of venous thromboembolism. So the uh, abstract is here. We, we uh, will give you the link here to the reference. And unless the, the, the reference is free, we just give you the abstract. So now you see our total goes up to six. So let's say we have a swollen leg. Now it's seven. Oh, here's an important one, obesity uh, or obese body mass index of 25 and over. People have talked about why did we come up with that? And we came up with that on the basis of two studies. The first here is in joint replacement that predicted patients who have a body mass of 25% or greater was associated with, this, with subsequent hospitalization for thromboembolism. Patients who had a total hip and came back with a clot. So that's one thing. Then we can X that out and we can go back and take a look at birth control pills. And it's been shown that the, uh, upon, among women with deep vein thrombosis, a BMI of over 25 had a synergistic effect with oral contraceptives. So these definitions aren't perfect, but we certainly have some data behind why we pick certain things. Notice the score is up to eight. We take a look at some other things, for example, it's an important thing to take a look at the definition of congestive failure because often it's equated with, a, with an ejection fraction. And you will notice that uh, in this study, it talks about a a, 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 a heart failure, both 
with preserved ejection fraction and reduced ejection fraction. So these are important concepts to consider. And, and so uh, that you can take a look at there. Another one that's really important here is, and one of the ones that I feel is really key is bed rest. Now, what are the definitions? Not being able to walk 30 feet or 10 meters at one time. Bathroom privileges or walking the room are not considered ambulation. Uh, so walking reduces the distance by 50%. You have a choice of the article here, which by the way is 11 years old, which shows clearly those patients that can walk 30 feet, both in the control group and in the treated group had a much lower incidence of venous thrombosis. There's also a video that you can watch here as well. Notice our score is up to nine. Another one that I'd like to point out, which is critical, is the definition of non-weight bearing. If you can't weight bear, it's been shown that, there's, that there is no uh, uh, increase in blood flow when you're not weight bearing. It's like you're sitting in a chair. Now, as you start to weight bear and as the weight bear becomes more and more uh, 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 complete, then your, your flow will increase again. But that's a very important point. People often don't realize that if you're not weight bearing, that by itself is a risk factor. And then there's age. Look what happens with age. Let's say you're over 75. Look at how that score has jumped up to over 14. Again, definitions will show you why, why we came up with those numbers. You have past malignancy, past history of current DVT. Family history, I'd like to highlight that because it's very important. If you have a positive family history, as I just look at how the score is up to 17, and it's a powerful risk factor for thrombosis. <clears throat> Frequently not included in clinical trials. The only other risk assessment that includes family history, not thrombophilia, but family history, is the British Department of Health uh, score. And using that score, they did cut the incidence of of DVT uh, in the uh, uh, incidence of fatalities of by 15% over a two year period. Third degree relatives, it's important to continue to, uh, to uh, know about third degree relatives. And also don't forget that ischemic stroke is a strong risk factor for thrombosis and is right up there with DVT and PE. So then once you get done with these, going through the score, you can view the summary. And all of those things that you checked off are highlighted in red so that you can easily see them. And it'll give you your total score. Then once you get that, here's your total score. And these are the various risk levels. Now, if you're doing this on the phone, you will only get the risk level for the score that you put in. For example, over eight. <clears throat> You'll see in general and vascular surgery, mostly the score goes up as the score goes up, the incidence of thrombosis will go up. And uh, if, the, uh, if, if, if those, uh, those scores are also based on these articles so that you can read more here uh, about the various scores and how it was mandated uh, and how that was very successful in lowering the incidence. And here, for example, we're talking about total hips and here's a article uh, that talks about the division between above and below 10 in the administration of anticoagulants and the risk of thrombosis for total hips. Now, once you get to this point, you can email the results, you can download a PDF of the results, or you can start again. And we wanna remind you that we do not save any information collected to generate the Caprini risk score, and we do not make money from this website. Our sole purpose is to promote world, worldwide awareness and prevent deaths from blood clots, deep vein thrombosis. Additional parts of this website will talk about, uh, first of all, asking the physician a question. And if we go to that section, uh, we will ask questions in general uh, about various topics. And you can fill out a form, including as much detail as possible. But remember that due to legal considerations regarding your personal care condition, uh, we can't address those questions. We're gonna refer you to your doctors. If you need a doctor in a particular area, we'll refer you to somebody in one of the societies such as the American Venus Forum or the uh, Society for Vascular Surgery uh, or Vascular Medicine, uh, but we do not give individual advice. And so, uh, and of course we do not keep any data, uh, whatever. 
Then if we go along to the next section here uh, is the resource center. And in the resource center, there's a number of important parts. There are <clears throat> is a, several blogs uh, which are uh, of interest in various subjects relating to uh, uh, risk assessment. One of the most popular is never kill a friend, never treat a stranger. We also talk about risk assessment paralysis and future goals for improving thrombosis prophylaxis worldwide. Coming back to the resources section, one of the really important areas is links, where, <clears throat> excuse me, links to uh, the uh, various uh, websites for various societies, including uh, ISTH, American Society of Hematology, AVF, and so forth. So you can easily access those sites. Coming back to uh, the next tab, uh, there's a patient story here, which is a very compelling story about a, uh, a, a true story told by Vonda Vaden Bates about her um, husband. And uh, we also encourage people who would like to uh, tell their stories, we would we'll be happy to uh, interview you and uh, uh, have you add the stories to our website. The next section is the video library. And uh, I have a video uh, site, Caprini Venus Resource Center. And this is a YouTube site. And it has approximately, uh, I believe, around 90 videos right now. Every week, a new video goes up so far, God willing. And the latest video is seen here. And as you can, you can go through and look at all of those videos uh, going all the way back to the beginning. And uh, they'll all be listed here for you to uh, easily uh, view on YouTube. The next section of the Resources Center is, is also extremely important. And uh, it's a section on definitions about venous disease. And we talk about things, there's a YouTube vi video about the silent killer, <clears throat> excuse me, which explains a lot of the fundamentals uh, about DVT and PE, and then some other definitions you can see here. So that's a, uh, a site that you can visit at your leisure. Back, going back to resources, uh, a, a really important thing are the validation studies. Right now, the support group is under construction. We haven't updated that, but validation studies are really important. We have listed the six best studies of the Caprini score uh, to date, but then underneath that, more articles. And if you click there, you will see all to right now, there's 243 articles that address the Caprini score. And uh, you can uh, have a display in whatever you want. And if you take a look at the most recent, these are the last two that were put up on this last Saturday. Again, if it's a free article, it'll be here. If it's not a free article, the reference will be here and the citation on PubMed. So that's a, uh, an important section. Coming back to the home screen, just to finish up, uh, again, you can go to the resource, more resources by just clicking on the learn more button off the home page. If you like, you can also uh, uh, go to see about, uh, about Dr. Caprini is listed here. And uh, in addition to that, you uh, can do the assessment, you can contact us. Uh, these are just other ways to uh, uh, navigate the website and our connections to Twitter, uh, YouTube, and uh, Instagram. So I hope that you uh, all will take a look at the site. And um, I always encourage people to write back to me with positive and negative feedback. It's very important that we continue to make this site better as we go forward. And I'd like to thank you for your attention.